In the last lesson, we learned the general strategy for tackling the analysis of an issue task. In this lesson, we'll take a closer look at the first three steps of this strategy. Here we are finding points to discuss in the essay. We'll use this essay prompt to demonstrate these steps. Here the issue is whether or not schools should be responsible for teaching ethical and social values. So to begin, we're going to brainstorm as many points as we can for both sides of the issue, and our goal will be to generate three to five points for each side. Now we're just looking for brief points to begin. We'll elaborate on some of these points later on. Let's begin with the side that says schools should be responsible only for teaching academic skills. What are some points for this side? Well, teaching values is something that many believe should be taught by the parents. Another point for teaching only academics is that it is not clear which values should be taught. There's also the problem of teachers having their own agendas when it comes to the values they might wish to force on their students. Plus, one could argue that schools already have enough to teach without adding to the curriculum. Okay, that's a good start. Now what about the other side? What are some points for schools teaching values in addition to academics? Well, we could say that schools are meant to prepare students for adult life, and values are a part of adult life. Also, some values are universal and should be taught in school. Another point is that schools already teach values indirectly. We could also add that schools are better equipped for teaching values since the teachers are professional educators. And it could be argued that teaching values does not necessarily mean forcing a single view on students. Okay, so that's an idea of the brief points we should try to identify for both sides of the issue. At this point, we should decide which side we're going to defend. Let's defend the position that schools should be responsible for teaching ethical and social values in addition to academic skills. So for the time being, let's remove the other points so we can focus on these points. Now, as you might guess, it won't be enough to simply list the points for this side of the issue. We'll need to elaborate on some of them if we want a complete essay. So for each point we have identified, we should consider what we might say to further the point. As we do this, we should try to answer the general question, why is this a valid reason for adopting my position? In doing so, consider one or more of the following sub-questions. Are there widely accepted principles that support this point? Are there real-world examples that support this point? These examples can be general, or they can be examples from your personal experience. Finally, are there any statistics that support this point? Now with this in mind, let's return to the points for this side of the issue and see how we might elaborate on these points. Let's begin with this point about the school's role to prepare students for adult life. What can we say to support this point? Well, we might give some examples of what we mean by explaining that schools prepare students for adult life by teaching them how to read, write, and perform other skills necessary to function in society. Since ethical and social values play an important role in one's adult life, schools should teach these as well. What about the next point about some values being universal? Why is this a valid reason for adopting this position? Well, we might give some examples of how values related to stealing, murder, and kindness are universal and should be taught. We might also discuss the societal problems that might arise if schools do not teach these universal values. Now, for the point about some values already being taught in schools, we might note that schools already have rules for general student conduct, and most classrooms have rules as well. Then we might discuss how those rules are related to certain values, and even if those values are not explicitly discussed, they are implicitly enforced, and as such, are already being taught indirectly. We might even add that since these values are already taught indirectly, why not teach them directly? Now for the point about schools being better equipped to teach values, we could note that teachers are professional educators who have been trained to facilitate learning. We might also mention that if schools were responsible for teaching values, then an effective curriculum would be created to further facilitate learning. Finally, for the last point, we could state that teaching values does not necessarily mean teaching one set of values. It could mean exposing students to value issues and letting them decide what's right or wrong. 
we might also add that it's useful for students to discuss values in an open forum rather than have them confront these issues for the first time later in life and not know how to respond appropriately. Also, if you happen to have a personal example that supports this point, you might want to mention it here. Now that we have some ideas of how we can elaborate on our points, we should choose which points we want to discuss in our essay. For most essays, three points will be sufficient. So let's say we decide to discuss these points. All right, now that we have identified points that support our position, we also want to discuss points for the other side. When we do this, we are demonstrating that we have considered both sides of the issue. Now in our essay, we don't just want to mention these points for the other side, we want to mention them and then rebut them. So for example, what kind of rebuttal can we make regarding the point that teaching's values is the role of parents? Well, we might counter this by saying that some parents don't teach values, or they teach values poorly, in which case the school should teach them. Or we might note that some parents don't demonstrate the values they teach, in which case the school should teach them. We might also add that even if values were taught in school, the parents can and should be involved in the process. Now typically we need only address one or two points for the other side to show that we have thoughtfully considered both sides of the issue. Let's say we want to address one more point. What about the point that teachers could use the opportunity to push their own values on students? What kind of rebuttal could we make here? Well, we could say that teachers will always have the opportunity to push their own values on students, and that a formal curriculum to address values could actually help prevent this from happening. Great, we now have two counterpoints and rebuttals, and we have three points for the side we have chosen to defend. So these will be our discussion points for the essay. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to use these points to write the essay.